Welcome to MapGro, the RPG art show. My name is Kyle, and today we are talking about virtual tabletops. This video is brought to you by the MapGro Patreon, but more on that in a little bit. If you're watching this video from some optimistic, far-flung future, well then, we here at MapGro HQ hope you're out there having a normal one. But for the rest of us, the beginning of this year looks a little dire and a pretty good time to talk about virtual tools for running tabletop games and RPGs. First, we'll be taking a look at what the pro subscription on Roll20 gets you, and then we'll talk about how to use the same kinds of digital terrain on a free site called Owl Bear Rodeo. But first, let's take a look at what the pro subscription level for Roll20 gets you. Uh, it gets you early access to the map tools for diametric and isometric maps. Diametric and isometric are very similar. Diametric means that each square, each diamond on this grid that you see is twice as wide as it is tall, while isometric grids are measured by the angle of each grid square. Now, I thought I was drawing isometric maps, but I've in fact been drawing diametric maps this whole time, uh, so that is the setting we're going to be demonstrating with. Now, Roll20 has several different layers, so we're going to select first the map layer, kind of that bottom layer of uh, the graphics that we're going to be putting together. And as you can see, I have laid out this map in all of these 12 by 12 grid modular tiles. As you can see, I've already preloaded all of the graphics that I'm going to be using for this demonstration onto the sidebar right here, but it's really just a matter of clicking and dragging it into the browser window to to uh, bring it in on your own map. When you are dragging in your graphics from the sidebar, it's important to keep the Alt or Option key, if you're on a Mac, held down. Um, this will keep you from interacting with the snapping grid, uh, and it'll make you, it'll allow you to really make sure that you're getting things in the right size and in the right space. If you are scooting things around and it seems really jerky and imprecise, it's probably just because you need to hold down the proper hot button to make sure that snapping is off. You can click on tiles that you've already laid down and copy and paste them uh, by right-clicking on them or just using the normal, um, you know, control V and control C stuff. Uh, that's, that's really nice. Now, the reason that I have my tiles set out as 12 by 12 tiles is because when you put together a three by three grid of all of those tiles, you get a 36 inch by 36 inch space, which is perfect for a skirmish tabletop gaming if you wanted to play um, say I don't know Rangers of Shadow Deep or if you wanted to extend it to a 48 by 48 board and uh, play a game of turn of 28 or you know whatever you want to do this is versatile once you have all of your ground tiles in place you can horizontally flip a couple of them to just add a little bit more variety and keep things from looking too pattern like now, if we wanted to, we could add whatever kind of extra buildings and scenery we wanted to on this map layer, and that would help to keep the token layer, um, the layer for the player characters, a lot cleaner. Um, but as you'll see, uh, we don't want the grid to run over the scenery pieces. It really looks a lot nicer if the grid is on the ground and the scenery pieces kind of are on a layer above that. Now, Roll20 is designed to expect that all tokens are going to be exactly the same size. So it's going to kind of like shrink or grow everything that you drag on there. So you'll have to kind of get it to size. Uh, the nice thing is that you can set up all of these maps ahead of time with all of the characters and tokens in place already, and then just scoot to those when when you need to play that board. Uh, but uh, it really doesn't take too long to set up as you go. Now, where the pro subscription for Roll20 really earns its keep and really gets your money's worth is uh, the uh, measurement tools. So you can use a ruler to determine distances. And this is really important if you don't want to be there, you know, counting every single grid space, especially if you are counting, you know, spaces for uh, a long range spell or a long range weapon or something like that. That's just going to take you a really long time. You can set up each grid space to count as its own number of units. So you could set things up 
to every grid space to equal one inch or three feet if you're playing Zweihander or Flames of Freedom or five feet if you are playing 3.5, uh, which is really, really nice. And again, because Diametric is twice as long as it is tall, that means that the math is going to be different. And if you're using a regular top-down ruler, all of your measurements up and down are going to be wrong. Uh, and like, like I said, this is really what makes uh, isometric and diametric gaming uh, possible on virtual tabletops. Now, I love Owlbear, and we're going to talk about Owlbear in just a second. But first, I'll bet you've been wondering, where are all these beautiful map pieces come from? Well, <laughs> let me tell you. If you just head on over to patreon.com slash mapcrow, you will see that all of these map pieces and figures and tokens that I've been using are already posted for patrons. For just $5 a month, you will be getting all kinds of downloadable goodies like uh, grids, map pieces at both diametric and isometric sizes, and all of these beautiful tokens to go along with it. If you've had it up to here with subscription services, I understand you can head on over to mapcrow.itch.io and uh, buy a copy for $10. It'll come with all of the same stuff, including the Photoshop document files that I'm using to put all this together. So if you want to edit them uh, or change the colors or just go nuts with it, you have all the working files that I used to create this stuff. So uh, yeah, go nuts, recombine all the stuff stuff, make your own original maps, make your own original minis. All I ask is that you not use any of my stuff in commercial products. Just keep it for personal use only, please. Back to Owlbear Rodeo. That's owlbear.rodeo. It's a free site. It basically does uh, about a quarter of the things that Roll20 does, uh, but it, it does it remarkably well part of what you get as a patron or a customer on my itch store is uh, these big giant 36 by 36 grids um, specifically so you can use owlbear to do it then you just click drag in the rest of the tiles and scenery bits that you need uh, and the snapping kind of works a lot better in owlbear than it does in roll 20 i'm not quite sure what the deal is there um, but you can't flip things horizontally for the sake of brevity i'm just going to copy and paste this one a couple of times to show you some of the features other than the base map, this giant grid, everything else that you click drag into the browser window is going to show up as a token on your right sidebar. And this is where Owlbear Rodeo is clearly designed to support top-down maps mostly, because the ruler doesn't work quite the same way that it does in Roll20. And also, if you hold down the Alt or Option key, it will just duplicate whatever you're clicking and dragging, uh, which you can have a lot of fun with that, uh, but it's not going to really affect the snapping, so switching back and forth can be um, a little confusing. To get rid of unwanted Marpies, uh, as soon as you start clicking and dragging something, a little trash can icon shows up at the bottom of the screen, so just drag it into that and it will disappear. Whatever you click drag on will show up on top, so it, you can very easily end up into a situation where if you drag a house it will show up on top of the characters right in front of it or the ground tile uh, it can get a little confusing but there's something you can do to fix that once you have things where you want them to be if you click on it once and hit the padlock it will lock it in place which is really handy now there's a bunch more that Owlbear Rodeo can do that I'm not going to go into. There's also a bunch of stuff that Roll20 can do that I'm not going to go into. But this will get you the basics, so if you go out and uh, become a Patreon subscriber or uh, buy a copy from my itch store of all these map components, you can start messing around and making your own maps today. Uh, uh, easy peasy. That about does it for this episode. I'm really looking forward to this year. I thought when I got started drawing maps uh, last last year, around this time, I thought it was going to take me like five years to have the kind of impact that I've already had in one year. Uh, and it has been uh, just such a blessed journey to take with all of you. And uh, I just want to thank you so much for watching. And until next time, my friends, farewell. <laughs>